Hey guys, and welcome to how to paint a custom Stormcast Eternals paint scheme using this Vindicta model from the Dominion box. So today we're going to be going through and um, doing him up in uh, my own brand of color scheme, which is this here. Now, if you'd like to see individual steps on how to do uh, the flesh, the, the, the sort of the cream bone uh, robes or the black robes or the armor specifically on its own, then I have a series of hobby tips videos which just focus on each of those steps, which are, the links are in the, in the down there if you want to go ahead and just look at those individually. Um, and if I'm really good, I'll put a link to the uh, how to paint the armor up in the top right hand corner now. Uh, but otherwise, this is going to be like a more overview style uh, paint scheme where we go through the whole process using one of these Dominion models and um, it'll be a little bit more of a, I guess, a faster approach, so I won't go into huge detail on each step, but we're going to see the overall thing of putting all of those Hobby Tips videos together into one, one uh, I, go, I guess, um, piece and try to utilize all those skills uh, on one of these models. So initially what I've done here is I've undercoated it black, obviously I've done the base, and then I've sprayed it with uh, Runelord Brass um, undercoat spray from Citadel. So that's how we're doing this. We're using a spray to get the initial um, metal color down before we begin. So if you're gonna if you're gonna try this technique, then that's where you want to begin. Black undercoat spray and then the Rune Lord brass from Citadel. And then from that, um, we we can start the process. So. Um, what you want initially is a whole range of colors. I'll, I'll leave a, a list of those with the final overview and, and picture of this, this little character once it's all done. You'll see a list of the paints that I've used. But essentially we're going to be going through and using a set of um, washes for the armor. So we've got a sepia uh, shade there. We've got the null and oil. Um, we were also using for metals, we've got some iron breaker, uh, sorry, uh, lead belcher there or any sort of dark metal. We've got a rune frank steel and then uh, for the armor we'll be using the storm host silver. And then we have a range of color glazes that we're going to do on this armor because we're not going to just do a simple uh, wash. We're going to then color glaze into it and create nice, effective uh, sort of shifts of color and tone within it to give a sort of almost heated, uh, heated armor look or, or like a like discolorations going on across the armor, which really uh, make it vibrant and stand out, as we can see from, from this one, uh, even on this camera. You know, it's got a very deep luster to that, that armor. And if you want to achieve that, it's done through adding all these extra colors. So we have a magenta tone here from Citadel. We have um, a purple, okay, this violet. If you see any of my other tutorials, you know I'm really a big fan of these colors. And the, uh, the Drakenhof Nightshade, so a dark blue. So they're the main colors we're using. As I said, if you want a more in-depth process, check out those links, take a look at it there, and you'll be able to follow along. Um, so, but if you are gonna, if you are gonna try this out, um, you wanna set up your palette, get your colors ready, and um, we'll begin. So to begin with, we wanna just build in some richness and some darkness and some color, initial color into the into the Runelord brass. So um, when you're beginning, we're gonna start off with the sepia brown and you add a little bit of water to that and just to, just to dilute it down because you don't wanna put it straight on, it'll be a little bit too strong. So just like one or two drops, just to dilute it a little bit, not quite as much as a glaze, but just to, just to break down the color a bit. And then as you can see, you just, putting that all over the um, the model, letting it sink into all the grooves, give you a little bit of shadows. It starts to enrich the color on the surface and give you a more rich, deeper finish. And then as that goes through, you start to look at, um, you know, where it's pulling up, you know, move it around, make sure you draw it into the cracks and the, and the recesses, and that'll give you a nice finish. And then after that, once that's dry, you're moving on and then adding in the black, the null and oil. And the same thing, you're adding in the water, um, a few drops just to dilute it down, and then reapplying the, the black ink wash over the top. And so what you end up with is this nice um, oily black um, surface, which has a little bit of brown tinge to it to help enrich that, that brass color. And you get a much, much more satisfying finish than let's say using something like Agrax Earthshade or any of those type of uh, blacky brown colors, because now you've got more control. You can add more, more black wash to certain areas. You can leave some of that lighter brown showing through. Of course, on a, on a brass color like this, you know, you're not seeing as greater effect, but when you do the silver areas, you'll notice a bigger change as you're adding those two 
two colors separately, one over the top. So you do the brown first and then that black black ink wash. And so what you really end up with is something quite rich and, and, and deep. Um, and then from there, now you want to bring back some of the tonal range in that color because it will have dulled everything down. And so that's where the silver comes in. So we get that storm host silver out and then we're um, dry brushing, a very light dry brush with a nice synthetic brush or something similar that you, that's very directional. So something with a wedge shape on it like that is good, like the one I'm using. And you want to then very lightly dry brush, uh, make sure you, you make a very dry brush and lightly buff the surface um, and, and bring out all of those edges. And so you're brushing against the edges, you're, you're picking out all those areas and you get some nice, you know, simple line highlights that don't take you any time at all. It's very extremely fast. And that's part of the whole process of this is, you know, when you're going through, you can do these in, in blocks, you can do it in, in you know, in, in five or 10 at a time. You know, the whole process is designed to be very, very easy. And so you go through and you start buffing it up and you're bringing out all of that, all of that nice highlighted um, color there, that silver. And so you get this really nice burnished brass silvery look with these blacky brown uh, shadows. And that's a really great place. Um, you could even just stop right there. You know, that's for, for, a, for an introductory level, that's perfect. But now we want to, uh, separate out some of those silver areas. And so then once you've done that, you go back in with your, your dark metal color and you start uh, blocking out, you know, uh, blades or some of the scale mail or anywhere that you want to change the color into, into, into silver. And uh, then we go back through the same process. Once that's on, it'll go over nice and nice and evenly now because we've got some color on top of that Rune, Rune Lord brass. So the undercoat spray tends to be a bit smooth. So it's hard to go straight over the top of that. So that's why we've left that off to a second stage. And so once you've got that metal down, you can then come back in with your then sepia tone and then your null and wash uh, in the same process to give it that rich oily look. And then you come in with your silvers and uh, build that up. So I used the Rune Fang Steel first and um, gave it a little bit of a line edge highlight just in the main areas where the light is hitting. You don't have to be super over the top with this. You can, you know, just hit the main spots in the front and on the on the blades, you can just do the edge. Um, at this stage, if, if you don't feel comfortable with line edge highlighting like this, you could easily just very softly dry brush the, the edges and you would get the same effect. It's not really necessary to line edge highlight it, but if you want to be that extra fine detail, then you can have a go at it. And remembering that you're using the, the edge of your your um, your brush, not the tip, to create that, that line edge highlight on, on, on the edges. If you are going to use the tip, then you very, very soft and very slight little motions and you'll get those nice little lines uh, on those smaller areas areas like the scales and so on. So we're just coming through and doing that. And then for a final little extra bump, uh, we then use the Stormhost Silver again, uh, just on the very edges of some of those main points on the scale and the, and, the, and the blade to make it really stand out. And so then what you've ended up with is something that really is starting to separate out from the brass uh, and you're starting to see that silver and that's a really nice contrast and that that brings us into the final stage where we're going to then add in all those color glazes into the armor and then you'll see a lovely separation and because we've done that uh, dry brushing stage that highlight um, you've now got more tones for that color glazing to actually respond to and that's where we're now prepared for for the next stage. And so now that we've got this all, all together, I mean, it's all pretty much there. You could, you know, as I said, you could just stop right there and this would be fine if you were just starting out. Um, it's a great finish, but it's not quite at the level that we want for this. So um, this is where the color glazing is going to come into it and we're going to start um, putting all those extra colors. So if we have a look at the, the finished one, you know, you can see that there is um, quite a lot of difference in, in the color there. This one's a little bit washed out, whereas this has got tons of depth. OK, so we're not quite there yet. So to get to this, we need to add a little bit more variety into the tones and uh, make it more interesting. And that's where this color glazing comes into it. So um, you want to prepare your palette, get it all set up. We've got the, we're going to be starting with the, the um, crimson, moving on to the purple and then into the blue and really build it out. And at the end, we're going to um, then re-highlight some of the main edges with the silver. Um, but I'll take you through that in a second. But this is what we want to start off with. And um, you're going to see a great transformation in the armor. It's going to be really, really cool. 
And so the first glaze we're going to use is the magenta. And what that's going to give us is a lot of uh, reds, a lot of deep red in, into that. And it's going to combine with the, the, the brass, the red that's already in the brass color and sort of bring it out. And so the moment you start adding these glazes in, it just starts to come alive. It's an amazing thing. You'll think that the, the brown and, and, and black washes were good, but once you start getting into the glazing process, it really comes alive. And so um, what you want to do is add two or three drops of water. You want to get it quite thin, as you can see. Um, you really want to you really want to um, water that down and then wipe, wipe quite a lot off your brush. So you only have a little bit on there and then um, you're directing it into the areas that you want to see that color. So you're pulling it into anywhere where the armor meets a seam or meets a join or um, yeah, two plates come together, you know, where, where, where you would see a bit of darkness or a shadow. And so you'll see that across the, on the leg at the bottom of the, 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 um, the, the leg armor there or um, on the thigh or across the front of the chest um, you're, you're just you're just dragging it into in, into the grooves into the areas and pulling that that shadow in there and so you start to see this uh, build up of shadow uh, and on the lighter areas on the tops or so on you'll see that silver and that brass and so that color is really helping to enrich everything and so as we go through you'll do the the magenta first and and so that you it just all, all starts to work and you're not trying to wash it over everything and so there then um, once that's down and you let that dry, um, the next stages are the um, the purple wash. And the purple is going to add, you know, um, as you'll see me doing, it just adds so much more um, vibrancy. So the, the red starts to take on another kind of note. And in the lighter areas, as you direct it in, we're doing less and less of the model each time. You'll see me do that. I'm just only picking out very small areas around the model, um, adding to that red to purple to silver to you know um, brassy tones, and just finding those little moments to to bring out some variation in the color. And on the lighter areas, you'll notice that the 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 purple will become a sort of a almost like a lavender pink, and you'll get some little pinks in there as well. And so it's all adding to the the variation across the armor, and we're all Always drawing that across in, into those seams, into those areas, making sure it doesn't pull up on the flat, you know, pulling it down so you get a nice gradient, you know, keeping it very thin and very watery. You might do a second pass. A lot of these layers, you know, I might go back and do it again to like further emphasize um, some of those some of those tones. And so you're not just doing one pass, but because you're not washing it over everything really, you're kind of just um, dragging it in, into certain parts of the armor. You know, you can you can pay more attention. This is a very directed sort of uh, glazing technique. We're not trying to just slap on, on on the on the paint. So it works really well, and you start to build up that nice color as as you can see. And then finally, we're moving into um, the blue. Now, the blue is where you're going to help uh, deepen those shadows. You know, obviously, it's the that that blue is a very dark color, and it's gonna it's gonna help to really tie it all together. So you can get that really bruisey. Uh, sort of um, burnt metal look, you know, you're going to get then blue to purple to red to sort of a lighter orangey, almost goldish brass color to a silver, you know, you get the full spectrum of, of colors across the armor. And again, we're not trying to hit the whole the whole area. We're trying to hit any anywhere you have like a little depression in the armor or any of those kind of things. You'll see me going in and, and, and working out those little areas. And um, the overall finish gives you yeah, just a wonderful life to that armor, and um, and and very very specifically over this whole glazing process, I'm not hitting any of the 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 silver areas. So the the uh, the metal uh, blade on on the on the spear, the uh, scale mail that's around the skirt, anywhere that's got those those straight silver areas that has the the brown and black ink washes, um, we're not glazing those. And so that we get a separation in color and tone from the armor to the silver areas. And so your eye will read that as different. Even though the values are very similar, the colors are different. The, there's none of that glazing color in there. And so you're getting um, a nice bit of separation and, and, and difference without needing to change value. It's a little subtle little trick that you can do, but it, um, it, it really does help to, to sell the model. Uh, and then finally, we want to hit those uh, edges with some more of that silver. So you'll see me come through and I'll get a fine detail brush. And I'm just trying to just hit those those uh, edges, the main edges where the light is hitting. So on the top of the, the knee or the uh, the thigh uh, armor plate there or around the, around the 
um, on the on the chest there around the edges there uh, anywhere where there's like a nice good uh, line where you can just run run your edge of the brush along and, and give a bit of bit of extra highlighting uh, along the top of the shield and so on just to add a little bit more punch to those to those lights and and really build it up you could uh, very softly dry brush directional dry brush those edges but I find that with that that little fine edge highlight it just helps bring out a, a, a just an extra level of quality and and um, and and tonal range to the to the armor, and it makes it look really cool. And then once that's done, it's just about blacking out all the other areas um, that are going to be other colors. So the plume, the parchment, um, the leathers, the flat part of the shield um, that isn't the embossed section, as you'll see me pointing out. Um, you know the scabbard on the sword. If you were doing the old stormcast, it would be like the the capes and the the smaller robe section and so on so that they can be then painted in, in, in with the other colors that we're going to do next and once you've reached this stage uh, it's a really satisfying moment to um, see that armor come together with all that beautiful color in it and blacked out all of those other secondary details it just sets it all apart now you know if you want it to be even quicker you don't even have to do the little black areas there you could leave them metal and you would never even know and a ton of the other little smaller little strap details and so on if you wanted to be really fast but for the sake of uh, you know uh, being pedantic we'll go through and actually like separate those out but the main ones are the the black on the on the shield the plume the shoulder pad that's got the flat area not the obviously the um the lion there and so on and the, and the detail on the shoulder pad and then the uh the shaft of the spear and the parchment so if this was one of the older ones you'd also do like the robes and so on and going over the metallic it does take a couple of coats uh, to get that nice uh, smooth finish and that's what you're looking for so that uh, the other colors go over the top so we've got a few to, to go through there's you know the bone colors here um, we've got some grays for the black we've got some contrast paint there and, and some glaze medium the the contrast medium to uh, do some glazing on the black we've got um, some turquoise and some blue and green uh, to do some highlighting and then we've also got uh, the doom bull and the bella brown there for the leathers and so bringing that all together it's a lot of colors there but it's going to achieve a, a really really great result overall and so we end up with you know th this this type of this type of thing where we're it's it's a very simple color scheme but if you look you're just starting to see that there's a lot of other little colors in there and little little changes you know even in the black you know there are there are differences in material qualities to the shoulder pads to the to the the robes we've got a very sort of gloss lacquered finish on the on the shoulder pads and on the weapon uh, with a slight green blue tinge um, the robes are then that that neutral gray you've got the bone and the little the little tiny gems that are on that bone robe giving a little flash of blue uh, as well as on, on the on the crossbow there at the end and that's the same for the spearman here so you're looking for those little moments of um, of interest just to help add a little tiny bit of color to this um, without having to go over the top and we end up with something really beautiful so yeah let's get started and so the next stage, um, we're looking at highlighting all of those uh, armored areas that are going to be black with the contrast and also the, le the, the sort of the back of the boots and so on. And so we're going to use neutral grays for that and um, starting from a dark base and then building up those lights um, all the way up to, to a... I guess um, a mid-tone and then a light gray and so you'll see me just going around and picking out all the edges on the uh, shoulder pad and then on, on the backs of those boots and the leg there um, and on the shield and doing little fine highlights and and on the on the scabbard we're doing a lot of um, little little uh, marks and dots to, to simulate weathering and so you're building up through layers and then um, once you finish, you'll see a nice um, range of tones, which then when we put the contrast on with the with the medium, um, a very light glaze of that green green contrast paint, you end up with um, a nice blue green tint to that that neutral gray. Um, and it looks really cool and you get this like lacquered finish, which is really nice. But that's just on the on the armored shoulder pad and the um, and the shield. The rest of the areas that are the fabric or the or the scabbard, they stay um, just the neutral gray. And so you get some difference in 
in colour. And then from there we're moving on to the spear. And the spear is doing that turquoise with again the contrast glaze um, over the top, uh, highlighting up and then glazing it almost like you would an ink wash. And so you get this nice rich uh, shiny finish as well. And that gives you another one of those var variances of, of material. Um, which is what you're looking for. And then to add a little bit more flash of that um, that blue on the model uh, for the little gem that this particular model has, um, going through and building up through blues and greens, a um, little, little bit of color there on, on the on the armor. So you see another flash of that, of that um, which I think is, um, you know, really, a uh, really beautiful touch and a lot of the models have these little tiny little studs on them that you could do as gems they could just be studs or whatever but um yeah it, it just adds a little bit of extra something when you've got quite a neutral uh, color scheme overall um, and then once we've got all, all of our all of our model up to that point then we're looking at uh, the leathers and for the leathers we're using um, doom bull and a bit of black and doing like a dark base which you'll see me do in a second and then building up with Bella Brown the highlights and then with the highlights what we're really trying to do here is simulate those little cracks and scratches like I did for the scabbard you're doing little tiny marks and flicks and dots and that that just that just gives you a little bit of that wear and tear on, on, on the leathers but keeps everything pretty muted so that it's not jumping out at you um, we want the armor to be the the centerpiece here, you know. So that's the that's the main the main uh, I guess flow of of, the, of those colors. And then finally, we're looking at the uh, the bone. So for the parchment, uh, any robes that you had on the model, uh, and the plume. And so again, the same process. We're building up from a from a dark brown, like from a mid tone brown base, moving up through the ushapti bone and up into blending with white. Um, and you're doing that same flicking motions and little tattered motions there to get that nice um, weathered look on the parchment. And then for the plume, you're going to be, once you've got your base down of Ushabti, um, you want to get a nice light color. So using a dry brush, dry brushing up successive layers of uh, white mixed with the Ushabti to get your highlights on the edges of the, of, of the plume. And that's basically it and you're done. And so here we are, the final product. So the base was done with um, the dark gray, the uh, necromancer cloak here built up with lighter, lighter tones of gray, and then um, some sepia tone wash, really watered down, sort of dabbed onto the base with a little bit of the green mixed in as well. So you get like a brownie green uh, tone, as you can see there. Uh, just to break up the gray and give it a little bit more life. But uh, overall, yep, that's it. And so you can see now, um, the process of getting this to this level and just those extra steps of um, color glazing into that armor just really helps bring it all, all, all together and, and, and give the overall finish a much more satisfying look. Um, and when you combine that with the differences in materials like the, the contrast glazing on the on the black, on the shield and the, and the shoulder pad and the shaft of the spear and so on, yeah, it just it just it, this color scheme is just a lot of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, there'll be an overview and, and better photo at the end with the list of paints for you to have a look at. But uh, I hope you have uh, got something out of it and um, use it in your own in your own process. That'll be really cool. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, hit that like button, subscribe button uh, if you have enjoyed it. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.